Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to take what we have learned about drawing Lewis dot structures of atoms and start sticking those atoms together to build up compounds and draw their Lewis dot structures. Our objective is to draw the Lewis dot structure of compounds. If you'll rem remember back a couple videos, we looked at taking the number of valence electrons that an atom had and drawing those valence electrons as dots surrounding the symbol. And this was a good way to represent the valence electrons in an element. Now what we're gonna do, um, well, sometimes you can think of this as taking, uh, treating these atomic Lewis dot structures as puzzle pieces and sticking them together to share electrons so that each and every one of the elements has a full octet. When we start sticking these puzzle pieces together, we end up with structures that look something like this. The, um, anytime we draw a line, a line such as this one, a line represents a shared pair of electrons. Write that in there as a shared pair. So it's also perfectly fine to draw that as two dots instead of one line. So the line represents a bond. Two dots would represent a shared pair. A shared pair of electrons makes a covalent bond. So two dots, one line, they are equivalent. If a pair of electrons is not shared, such as that pair right there on the nitrogen and ammonia, we're gonna call that by a couple of names. One name for that is a lone pair because it's not shared between two. And another name for that is a non-bonding pair. Um, I tend to uh, refer to them as lone pairs, but a little ways down the road, we're going to look at something called Vesper theory. And in Vesper theory, they're routinely referred to as non-bonding pairs. Now, if a single pair of electrons is shared, we're going to call that a single bond. So one shared pair makes what we call a single bond. Two electrons, one pair, that's a single bond. If instead we're going to share two pairs of electrons or have two bonds, we're going to call that a double bond. And so a double bond consists of four shared electrons or two pairs of shared electrons. Um, over here in acetylene, we actually have three pairs of shared electrons, and that's referred to as a triple bond. So a triple bond is six shared electrons or um, three shared pairs of electrons. Let's take a look at these two structures and see how many lone pairs or bonding pairs are being shown. Um, these two structures are actually equivalent. Um, they are both structures for ozone. The one on the left has all of the electrons shown as dots. The um, one on the right shows all of the bonding pairs as a line instead of a pair of dots. So um, let's see, we can take either one of these structures and count the electron pairs, and we should end up with the same result. So if we're looking at the uh, structure on the left, for bonding pairs, we have one, and then here there's a double bond, so that's two pairs. So we have uh, three bonding pairs, I'll just abbreviate that BP, three BPs, and then for the lone pairs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that gives us six lone pairs. So three bonding pairs and six lone pairs, and uh, let's see, that is answer two. We should get the same thing when we look at the other structure. Um, over here in the right-hand structure, here is one bond, and here is a double bond. So there's a single bond plus a double bond. The single bond contributes 
um, one pair of electrons, the double bond contributes two pairs of electrons. So that's showing three bonding pairs. And then I should probably do this in a different color. I'll go with green. Um, for the lone pairs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's six lone pairs of electrons. So either structure, we should get the same result um, because it's just two different representations. Um, in one case, we're showing all the electrons as dots, and in the other case, bonding pairs are shown as a line. The octet rule is really important when we're drawing Lewis dot structures, and it tells us that atoms are going to gain, lose, or share electrons until they are surrounded by eight eight electrons or four pairs of electrons. In this um, three-dimensional version of methane that's shown over in the left, um, each line represents a pair of electrons. So we're seeing two electrons here and another two tucked away there, two more here and two more there. So that's two times four or eight electrons. Um, when that central atom has eight electrons associated around it, the octet rule is satisfied. This slide is going to end up with an awful lot of words on it. I don't want that to be intimidating as our first run at Lewis dot structures of compounds. Um, this will be great later when you're uh, practicing drawing Lewis dot structures and you want to refer back to, wait, did I do this first or did I need to do that first? So uh, let's just kind of go through the procedure step by step. In the next video, we're going to work lots of examples following this procedure. So step number one, we need to count valence electrons. We want to add up the valence electrons for every atom that's in the substance. Um, if we're looking at a polyatomic ion and it has a negative charge, since electrons are negative, that means it picked up some extra electrons. So if it's, say, a minus three charge, we need to add three more to that valence electron count to account for the charge. But if it's a positive charge, like ammonium has a plus one charge, that means that it lost an electron. And so we would have to subtract an electron from our valence electron count. The next thing we want to do is draw the back bone of the molecule. This is going to show what's in the middle versus what's surrounding it on the outside. The rule that we'll follow is that the least, least electronegative element will be the one in the center, but it will never be a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen only wants to make one bond, um, and hydrogen's happy when it's 1s subshell is filled, which only requires two electrons. So hydrogen is only going to want a duet rule, so it can't be our middle atom. Now, these first two steps, it doesn't matter which step you do first, but you do need to make sure you get both of these done before you move on to step three. In step three, we're going to take those valence electrons that we counted in step one and put them into the backbone that we created in step two. Um, the process here the order does matter. The first thing you want to do with these valence electrons is put octets on all of your outside atoms. The next step is if you have any leftovers, stick them as lone pairs on the central atom. And then last but not least, once you've run out of electrons, check that everybody has an octet or hydrogen has a duet. And um, if we're missing octets, we're going to have to take a lone pair off of an outside atom and slide it in to be a bonding pair, which will make double or triple bonds. Let's just add a little note in here. We're going to slide um, an outside atom's lone pair this up here um, into a bonding position. So you want to keep it on the atom that it started with, but you want to just slide it over a little bit so it's now shared with an atom that's not quite at an octet yet. So this slide is going to show us some guidelines 
for how many bonds different elements went to form. Um, I was so disappointed to learn that um, my video here won't uh, play while I'm doing the PowerPoint recording. So you might want to pause the video. Um, and if you have the PowerPoint downloaded, go ahead and uh, play that little clip. This is a great scene from Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, it has, um, it, it's only about 30 seconds. Um, so yeah, the, what we're talking about here are guidelines. And um, so what sort of guidelines do we have? Well, if uh, we're talking about hydrogen, hydrogen will want to form just one bond. Halogens generally want to form one bond as well, but that is only when they are outside atoms. There will be compounds that pop up sometimes where a halogen is the central atom, and then it will need to form more than one bond. Uh, hydrogen usually makes two bonds, nitrogen makes three, and carbon will make four. So our objective was to draw Lewis dot structures of compounds. This video really outlay or laid out the process for doing that. In the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at lots and lots of examples.